I've used an Android emulator in a lot of my videos in the past, and I've gotten a lot of comments asking about what emulator I use or how to set up an emulator, and I do actually have a video on my channel from a long time ago showing you how to set up an emulator, but that video is a couple years old now and it's pretty outdated. So in this video, I'm going to give you an updated guide of how to set up an emulator, and I'm also going to go through how to make sure that that emulator is rooted, and if you're like me and you're planning on using that emulator to do some Android hacking like penetration testing or bug bounty hunting, you're also going to need to make sure it works with all of your tools. So I'm also going to show you how you can make sure it works with ADB, Burp Suite, and Frida. That is a lot of things I want to cover, so depending on how long this takes, I might end up making it a two-parter. But if I do, the second video will be coming pretty soon. So the first question is obviously, what emulator do I use? I personally like the Android Studio official emulator. There are some other emulators out there. Jenny Motion is one that a lot of people use, but I personally just prefer this official emulator from Android Studio. For one, it's officially supported by the Android team, so it's always being updated and having that that brand new most recent version of Android available. And they also just have tons of documentation and resources available if you're ever having issues or run into a problem, it's easy to figure out what's going on. So now that that question's been answered, let's go ahead and download Android Studio and try to get our first emulator up and running. I'm going to be installing this on Windows for this video, but I've installed Android Studio on both Linux and Mac in the past and had no issue, so it should work fine no matter what operating system you're working with. You should be able to go through the install process like normal. The only thing to make sure is when you get to this section for choosing components, make sure that the Android virtual device is selected because that's what we're going to use to actually set up our emulator. Once you install Android Studio and you get to this page that says Welcome to Android Studio, now you can select More Actions and in this menu you should see an option for the Virtual Device Manager. Once you select that, that will open a new window for the Device Manager and here is where you can actually start creating your virtual device. To create your first device, you select the plus button in the top left corner, and the first thing you need to do is select your hardware. It really doesn't matter what you select at this point, this is mostly just for like the look and feel of the device, how big the screen is, that kind of thing. I'm just going to select a Pixel 8, but you can choose whatever you want. In my original video, I actually recommended that you select one without the Play Store enabled. That's because if the device has a Play Store enabled, then the device will not be rooted by default. But in this updated version, I'm actually going to go about a different way to get get a rooted device, so it really doesn't matter whether or not you have a Play Store enabled or not, and you might as well have a Play Store just in case you want to install something from it. But once you've selected your hardware, then select Next, and the next screen is where you select your system image which is essentially the version of Android that's going to run on your emulator. I typically don't go for one of the brand new versions of Android because sometimes some of the tools that I'm using won't work with those updated versions and they'll have to take a little bit of time to adapt and figure out how to get them to work. I'm going to use Android S, which is API 31 for this. And you'll notice that a lot of these have these little arrows pointing down next to them. That means that that version of Android has not been downloaded. I had previously downloaded both S and API 35 for emulators that I've worked with in the past, so those have already been installed on my system. But whenever you decide whichever version of Android you want to use, you are going to need to download that system image first. So to do that, just click on the arrow next to the version you want and it'll open up a new window where it'll download that system image. But once you've chosen the version you want, just click Next, and now you're essentially done making your emulator. You can change the name if you want, you can change the orientation, but at this point, your emulator is essentially ready to go. So we can just click Finish, and now once we're back at our device manager, we can just click the Play button, and it'll launch our emulator. So at this point, if all you're looking to do is just use an emulator to run some apps or whatever, you are pretty much done. You can open the Play Store, you can go download some apps, and you can essentially use this emulator just like any Android device. But like I said at the beginning, my needs for this Android emulator are to actually be able to hack Android apps with it. I work in cybersecurity, I'm a pen tester, I hack mobile apps for a living, so I don't need to just run apps on the device. I need to be able to access this device with all kinds of different hacker tools in order to do an assessment on an app that I'm testing. So the first thing we need to set up is ADB, which stands for Android Debug Bridge. This is basically going to be our gateway to communicate with our emulator from our computer. We can use this to install apps, drop into a shell and run commands on the file system, upload and download files, pretty much anything we need to do with our device, we're gonna do that using ADB. So first I'm gonna show you how to use ADB from Windows. Because this emulator is currently 
currently running on my Windows host machine. So even if you're running this on a Mac or a Linux machine, this would essentially be the same process as long as you're trying to communicate with your emulator from the host machine where the emulator is running. The file paths and everything that I'm talking about right now will be Windows. So some of those might be slightly different for either Mac or Linux, but the process is essentially the same. But if you happen to be someone who likes to run their tools in a VM, like on Kali Linux or something, don't worry, I got you covered there. I'll cover how to do that in just a little bit. But to find ADB on your Windows host machine, you need to find where your Android SDK is installed. It should have been installed along with Android Studio, and your default location is going to be under App Data, which should be inside your user directory, Local, Android, SDK, platform tools. And when you look inside that directory, you'll see a bunch of different files listed. And the first one should be adb.exe. So from this directory, if we run adb devices, we see that our emulator is listed right here. And if we had an APK file for an Android app that we wanted to install, we could just run adb install, and then the path to whatever APK we have that we want to install. You can also use ADB push and then a path to a file if you want to push some file onto the emulator. And ADB pull, exactly how you would think, that is to pull a file off of the file system of the emulator. And we can also run ADB shell, and that will drop us into a shell where we can actually interact with the file system of the device. When we do that though, you'll notice that the prompt is a dollar sign. That means we are not root, we are just a regular shell user, and if we were to run SU to try to elevate our privileges to a root user, permission denied. But don't worry, I'll fix that in just a little bit. First, I wanna very quickly go over how you can actually access this emulator from ADB if you are using a virtual machine. If you're like me, you might prefer using your tools inside a Linux virtual machine whenever you can, and you might prefer working with the Linux command line instead of the Windows command prompt. Fortunately, we can use ADB from the Linux command line too, just like we did from the command prompt just a minute ago. You can install the entire Android SDK on your Linux system if you want to, or if you just want to use the individual tool Tools, you can just run a sudo apt install on ADB just to get that tool installed. Unfortunately, when we ran ADB devices before, it was able to immediately see our emulator. But when we run it from our Linux VM, it doesn't see it. Just to give you a quick little visual so you can kind of keep this straight in your head how everything is set up. I have my Windows host machine, which is like my base PC. This is the physical machine that I'm running everything on. And then on that host machine, I have my Android emulator, which is a virtualized Android device. Then I also have a Linux virtual machine, which is another virtualized device. And this Linux VM is set up with a NAT network settings, so it can talk to both the internet and it can also talk to my Windows host machine but it can't talk to my emulator. But Android Studio has a special workaround for this. They have a special alias IP address, and that's 10.0.2.2. This is an alias that actually corresponds to the local host of my host machine. So on my Windows host machine, I have my local host network, and I also have my 10.0.2.2 on my emulator. So if I can talk to my local host, I can also talk to that 10.0.2.2 address on my emulator. I won't go too deep on networking and how all those things work. I just wanted to make sure that you understand when I use that 10.0.2.2, you know where it's coming from and it's not just out of the blue. But back to my Linux VM, now that we know that we have that 10.0.2.2 address, now we can run adb connect 10.0.2.2 and now we get a pop-up on our device asking us to allow USB debugging from this machine. And if we click allow, now when we run ADB devices, now we see we have our device connected. And we can run all those ADB commands that we already talked about on our Windows, but now we are doing that from our Linux VM. So now we know how to access our device, but we still don't have root. And a lot of the tools and things that I need to do in order to do my job as a pen tester are going to require root permissions. In my original walkthrough for setting up an emulator that I did a couple years ago, I showed you how to build an emulator that was rooted by default, and that will still work. But after you have that rooted device, whenever you're trying to install different things and access different parts of the file system, you might run into some problems. I know a lot of people had some inconsistencies between like the version of Android that you were working with, and it can be a bit of a headache trying to troubleshoot all those issues. But fortunately, there is another way to do it that is actually using Magisk which is the tool that most people use to actually root physical devices. So a lot of those guides and resources that are out there for devices that have been rooted with Magisk, those just translate one-to-one -to, -one to this emulator, and you don't have to go figure out all these specific things that are just for this emulator and don't actually apply to other types of devices. 
And to do this, we're gonna use Root AVD, which is a tool that was specifically built so you can take an Android Studio emulator and put Magisk on it, and you can download it for free on GitLab. So I'm gonna be running this on Windows because my emulator is running on my Windows system, but I think it should work both for Mac or Linux, and I'll have a link to the GitLab page down in the description below if you wanna check it out. Once we have root avd downloaded, I'm going to go to that directory and I'm gonna find the root avd.bat file. Again, I'm doing this on Windows, so I'm gonna be using the .bat file, but if you were using Mac or Linux, you would not be using the .bat file because that is a Windows specific file type. And with my emulator running, I'm going to run root abd.bat list all avds. Now, if you have multiple system images downloaded on your system right now, then you will come back with a bunch of different results. For example, I have Android 35 right now installed, Android 31, which is what this emulator is running, and I've also have Android 29, which I used on a previous emulator I've used in the past. But you need to select the one that is the emulator that you are currently using and want to root which in my case is Android 31. And I'm going to copy this command that ends in ramdisk.img. And now I'm going to run that command. And it's going to ask me to choose which version of Magisk. And I'm gonna choose the local stable version. And now after that finishes, it will shut down your AVD. I will mention right here that I have heard that in some of the newer versions of Android, this process doesn't work as well. But in my experience working with Android 31, which is S, it seems to work pretty well. And I've seen other people say that that works for them as well too. But you're welcome to try with whatever version of Android you want and hopefully it'll work out for you. But once your AVD shuts down, I'm gonna go back to the device manager in Android Studio and I'm going to launch my emulator again. And now when our emulator launches, we see that we have a new app installed and that is Magisk. And when we open that, it says that your device needs additional setup for Magisk to work properly. Do you want to proceed and reboot? Sure, I'll go ahead and reboot. And after it reboots, we can now go back to ADB. And once again, we can drop into a shell and we see that dollar sign prompt. But this time when we run su to try to elevate our privileges to root, now we get a pop-up that says a super user request and we can grant that request. And now our prompt has become a pound sign and that means we are root. And when we run who am I, we are root, and now we have full root access to the file system, and that's going to allow us to run all those tools and install everything that we need, like installing a Burp Suite certificate or installing Frida or all those tools that we're gonna need in order to do our job. So I feel like I've already covered a lot of stuff in this video, and it's probably getting a little bit long at this point, but so far I've gone over how to set up a Android Studio emulator, how to access that device over ADB, both from your Windows host machine as well as from a Linux VM, and I've also gone over how to root that emulator with Magisk. So if all you need is just an Android emulator so you can run apps and do whatever you want to do with a regular Android device, I feel like I've more than covered how to do that. But if you're someone like me who wants to use the simulator to hack Android apps, whether you're a pen tester like me or a bug bounty hunter or a developer or just a tinkerer that likes to poke around at stuff, you're also going to need some more tools installed. So in my next video, I'm going to go over how to install a Burp Suite certificate and intercept network traffic using a Burp Suite proxy. And I'm also going to go over how to install Frida, which is a very powerful tool that allows you to interact with apps at runtime and change how they behave to do things like bypass SSL pinning, bypass biometric authentication, bypass root detection, all kinds of things like that you can do using Frida. So if any of that sounds interesting to you, stick around and I'll cover how to do all of that with an Android emulator.